Moving fish from one tank to another, is it really as easy as just plopping and dropping? I don't think so. And why I don't think so is different tanks, even though they're on your same water source, you keep them fed the same way. You might use the same fertilizers or any kind of water treatments. Every tank's gonna be slightly different. And I wanna get into moving my Barbatus fish, my Barbatus catfish from this tank over to a 20 long. And these are going to be very similar tanks. They're in the same room. They're both not heated. So they're going to be running similar temperatures. But here's what I do when I move fish from tank to tank in my house. All right, this is the Barbatus Cory tank. That's a 10 gallon bow front. And I want to move them to a 20 long. These guys like surface area. And this tank was originally great for them. But now that they're breeding, I want to get them into something better. So first thing I'm gonna do is check water temperature. This room is, uh, or this tank's not heated. So it's gonna be going off of room temp, which is, it's saying it's 72.6. Sometimes it takes a minute for these uh, sensors to read accurately, but 72 sounds about right. We're gonna switch over to TDS, which is total dissolved solids. If I click the right button, usually we're around 200. So 195, that's going to give me a baseline to what the fish are used to. And now we're going to move over to the other tank. So this tank also is not heated, so we should be in a similar temperature range. It's actually a half a degree warmer, which is no big deal. And what the half a degree is going to be um, really just being in the corner of the house. It's running a, a little bit more powerful light, but this is still an extremely low power light. Uh, it's running a little bit bigger air pump, which is going to generate heat. Um, but mainly it's probably placement in the house. We're going to go ahead and check TDS. Make sure we're in the water. And we're at 203. So only 8 TDS difference, which is actually surprises me i figured it'd be a lot different because there's no fish in this tank uh this tank uh used to have axolotls it currently just has snails in it uh, i do feed it once in a while to keep the snails happy but that's it so temperature wise in tds we're perfect we're going to go ahead and just do um, a basic plop and drop but wait a minute didn't i just say plop and drop isn't right plop and dropper will be fine in this situation because the tds is very close the temperature is very close now, what would a plop and drop not be good for? Well, first of all, maybe this tank right here. Um, let's see what the parts per million is. 261, so the water is a little bit harder, and I know I knew this would be harder because I dosed calcium uh, for the snails there in this tank. And we're gonna see what the temperature is. Coming up on 76 degrees. I thought it would actually be a little bit warmer. I, do, I don't run a heater on this, but this light's very hot. It's actually a coral light. Um, it's actually even hot to the touch on the top. Fish rooms, my fish room uh, in the summer runs pretty warm. So it could be a 10 degrees difference. So I wouldn't want to drop fish from anything more than like three degrees difference. Uh, anything more than that, I think would be a shock to their system. And then anything that's going from a soft water, low TDS, to something that's uh, harder water or, or higher TDS uh, could be an issue as well. In that case, you'd want to maybe put them into a specimen container, uh, a piece of Tupperware, a bucket, and do like a 50-50 mix of the two tank waters to get them acclimated. But other than that, it's, I think it's time to plop and drop. Let's go ahead and move these Barbatas. All right, to make life easier, I'm going to drain um five gallons out so it's a 10 gallon tank so a five gallon bucket should get me about halfway um that's just going to be making it easier to catch these guys out and i'll probably also have to remove that uh, artificial log in the center all right got the water drained about halfway that was one bucket worth now i'm going to go ahead and pull out the christmas moss that's in there the box filter and the decoration put it in this bucket and uh that will just make things easier to try to catch these guys there are snails in this tank you know you can see them on the sides 
Um, after I catch the fish out, I'm going to let the snails, they'll drop the ones that are above. The water line will drop down in, and I'll try to catch those guys and move them throughout the house. The big ones I like to put into this tank because uh, it's hard to keep snails in here that are tiny because the goldfish will eat them. You can see I'm getting algae build up, so adding some more snails will help with that. But let's go ahead and get this stuff out, and then we'll catch some fish. So all the moss came out with that uh, decoration, so that's great. Um, so all that should be left are the barbatus. So we're going to go ahead and catch them. All right, to catch these guys, just using a fishnet, appropriate size for this tank. And I'm going to move these guys using a specimen container with some water. Uh, I mean, I'm really just going right across the room, and I could just net them and carry them right over. But I want to put these into a tank and just do a visual inspection on them while they're in the specimen container, and then. Uh, just move them on over. All right, here's two of the guys. Um, there's should be five or six of them. They are breeding uh, in that tank. And I just kind of want to show you, I mean, the, the muck is all stirred up from trying to net them out. These guys are gorgeous. So they're going to be stressed out a little bit right now from being caught out of their tank, but I'm going to go ahead and move these guys uh, right over into their new home. All right, they're both kind of stressed. They're just chilling, um, probably trying to get used to what's going on. And uh, we'll check back on them here in a little bit. All right, guys, so I just caught these two out. And this one is making me nervous. He's upside down. And here's the thing. I don't know if this is a Barbatus Cory thing, but, you know, I've had these guys for a year and a half now. And there's always been one that will go upside down. I always think he's dead. I think it's this guy. I don't know if he's got a swim bladder issue. Um, like I said, I've seen him upside down a lot. And I always thought he was dead, and it turns out... As soon as I'd like walk by him, he'd flip over and then be uh, upright. So I don't know if it's like a mechanism. There, see, he just flipped over. I don't know, that guy's, like, maybe that's just his, like, personality. But he always scares me. All right, so that's four in here now. And the water is a bit mucky. So they kind of hit the bottom and went zooming around. Um, so I do need to do a little bit of a vacuum on this. I can see one. You can't see them because there's so much muck. Uh, there's one on that rock right in the center of the screen. Um, yeah. So I'll have to get some, I'll get some video for this video. I'll, I'll get some footage for this video uh, with this water clear once they settle down. But uh, I think there should be one pair left. All right, here's the last pair. And man, their finish has gotten massive since I've gotten them. And they were breeding when I bought them. Um, now they're even bigger. And it looks like this guy, I don't know if his tail, he's got a little bit of a spine issue. Or if he's just kind of sitting in there weird. But uh, his, his tail's curved a little bit right there. Uh, but another reason I want to get them into a bigger home. Uh, but man, they are doing awesome. I figure I might as well show this uh, while we're talking about this Barbatus. One of their babies is over here in this tank. It's a small little guy. Um, this is from my, uh, I guess it would be my last batch. I don't know if it's batch four or five. Uh, it's the only one I've kept out of the ones I've bred. And he's um, probably around an inch long. And he's got this tank to himself except for the CPDs uh, that are in here. Um, but he came out of the fry rack. So he's, he's very happy in here right now. All right, so two things left I want to do after moving the Barbatus. One, I need to get their light on a Wi-Fi smart switch. So I did have a three pack of new ones. I used the Miros 
It's M-E-R-O-S-S -S brand. I've been using them for years with no issues. Uh, I just have one plugged in here because I had to program it. So now this one's ready to go. I'm gonna move it over to the Barbados tank and get that light on my schedule with all the rest of my tanks. All right, their light is on the Wi-Fi switch, which is tied into every aquarium in the house. They all come on at 11 a.m. and turn off at 11 p.m. This is a very low power light for this tank. This is a Phoenix Stingray clip-on light, which is made for more for like two and a half gallon, maybe a five gallon tank, or like a beta bowl, something smaller. This is a 20 gallon long. Uh, it's very low powered. Um, I was running it 24 hours a day when there was no fish in here to try to get some of these plants to establish before moving them over. Uh, the fish are kind of chilling out. They're uh, just probably afraid right now, but um, because there is a bunch of mulm and stuff that got kicked up, the sand is now covered. Um, I moved their filter from the other tank. I put new filter floss in it. That's gonna help pull a lot of the debris out of the water column. Um, so I'll probably have to change this filter out in just a day or two. Uh, it's going to get pretty mucked up. Uh, once this all settles, I will do a gravel vac and try skim as much as I can off the top of the sand. And we'll get this water crystal clear again. Um, once, once the water is crystal clear, um, I won't need uh, have a use for the box filter. Um, there's a hang on back breeder box, which is full of moss. And that's what this almost looks kind of weird or even disgusting. This is Christmas moss that's growing submerged in the box and it's coming out the overflow down to the tank. I think it looks pretty cool actually. It's kind of almost immersed ground. That's why it's real bright right there and darker there. And all this is is a lift tube moving water into this box. There is a little section of filter floss that I've actually never changed out, um, but it's mainly there not to polish the water, but just to keep beneficial bacteria. Water moves through a bunch of uh, Christmas moss, which is acting as a filter itself. There's a ton of mulm in the bottom of this, and back into the tank. The plants are what is doing the most of the filtration as far as, you know, biological. Uh, mechanical, a little bit by that box, but majority of it just kind of sits on the bottom, and then I have to remove it using a siphon. There's a guy right there, too. But right now, I know it's terrible to look at. So let's come back to this once the water clears up. All right, here's uh, day two. It's actually been less than 24 hours. The water is still very cloudy, and when looking at it, it's still particles. So I thought maybe it was an algae bloom uh, or bacterial bloom, so I was grabbing my Fritzyme 7 uh, just to give it a little boost. But now that I'm looking at it, it's actually fine particles. And it's all the sand. So this was all covered. There's actually a quarry right there. Hard to see because of all the particles. But they've been going around sifting the sand and just making a mess. And look at the polyfill. So that's less than 24 hours, and that thing already needs to change. So I'm going to go ahead and change that out. Uh, there goes some of the quarries over there. Uh, but it's just all this detritus and mulm that's built up uh, over the past couple years that they've been stirring up. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that filter box out, change out the polyfill, and uh, put it back in. And hopefully this water, I mean, they really... I mean, look at the leaves on the Anubis. I mean, they're, they're covered. There goes Charlotte, of course. But uh, you know, just a little bit of tank maintenance. We're going to knock that out. All right, so I flipped the polyfill on the box filter. But to speed this up, I took a uh, hang-on-back filter off another tank, filled it full of polyfill, and that way I'm really pulling a lot of water through the tank uh, to try and... Uh, clear all the little particles out and you can see the sand's pretty clear over here because the water is splashing and getting it up into the water column and I just gravel vacked all this over here you can see it's completely covered so I'm gonna let this run uh, for a while and then maybe in like a half an hour I'm gonna rotate this to maybe right here so that way it's getting water flow through the middle and just kind of move it around the tank to really help clean this up because even with gravel vacking this fine uh, mulm is just kind of everywhere. So I'm using the water flow uh, to help agitate it and keep it suspended so that way you can pull it and uh, filter out through the polyfill. All right, here we are. Just an hour later, the water is a lot more clear. It still has a, a little bit of a foggy tint to it. Check out that filter floss. This stuff really does a great job at polishing water. 
Uh, I see another couple hours. This is going to be pretty clear. Uh, there's still quite a bit of mom on the bottom, so it really needs stirred up. But I'm just over here checking uh, on the catfish. And we got one guy over here, and it looks like kind of the rest of the groups underneath uh, the log, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a whole new environment for them, and uh, I'm definitely not done with this video yet. I want to uh, definitely clean this up and get it looking a lot better. I do need to uh, change out this light. Uh, I really want a full length light on this tank. Um, this is in the middle of my family room, so I'm gonna to try to do something a little bit different than just a normal, like stick on the top tank. I need to top off the water um, and go from there. But here it is after an hour, just wanna kinda of show you guys. Hey guys, it's only been maybe another hour since I showed you working on the tank. But what I wanted to show this, you see this guy going up and down? This is actually breeding behavior for these uh, Barbatus Cories. Um, they've only been in this tank for 24 hours now. I put them in last night, and then today is the whole trying to get all the muck out of the water column. Uh, but when you start seeing these guys go up and down the glass, uh, that is breeding behavior uh, you can see there's a pair actually might even be three right here in this corner uh, but this guy right here that you see swimming that's going up and down the glass uh, that's what they do when they start breeding um, that's usually them looking for a spot to put eggs on the glass uh, so i wouldn't be surprised if i see eggs uh, in here tonight uh, which is a good sign that they're they're happy I, I can help trigger this. I've been doing a lot of water changes, so that, that's kind of a, a trigger. Um, you know, a bunch of fresh water kind of s stimulates uh, them to breed because it simulates uh, like a big rainfall. And with a big rainfall, in their natural habitat means a lot of food. Um, so I could uh, set this trigger off by feeding them like frozen blood worms. So I might do that uh, tonight and see if we get any eggs out of these guys. That would be super awesome if, if they're breeding in just 24 hours in this new tank.
Alright guys, one of the things I wanted to show during this video is the plants that are in this tank. What you're looking at right here is potted dwarf hair grass. This is what I sell on the website. Um, it, I just keep it in the tank to keep it growing. Right here is dwarf sagittaria. I just took some um, shoots out of another tank. Right here is Quipped, Crypt Wendetti Red. Uh, it's getting pretty big, which is awesome, and staying super dark. Uh, right next to it, it's looking a little haggard, but it's uh, Nubius Barteri. You can see that rhizome is getting pretty long. That rhizome is probably almost 10 inches. In the back corner is a small piece of java fern that I just kind of stuck back there, uh, trying to see if it'll grow. Uh, I don't have the best luck with java fern. In the front is a baby Amazon sword I took out my Vienna tank. And over here is another Anubia sword that I took out of my Vienna tank that's just been in here longer and it's growing uh, bigger. So that's the overall view of the tank and the plants that are in it. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I know it was super long. I didn't really mean for it to be such a long video. I thought about breaking up into different parts, but you know what? Let's just roll with it, make one big video. Uh, this tank is empty now, and I think what I'll do is I'll put it on Marketplace. Uh, if you're local to me in Columbus, Ohio, and you're interested in it, it's a 10 gallon bow front. The stand goes with it. There is a lid and the light and everything. The stand's actually for a 20 gallon bow front, so if you ever want to upgrade, the stand's already, already ready for a 20 gallon bow front i'll probably sell it for like 20 bucks for everything so um, anyways guys thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and i got two other videos i got to edit i already filmed and uh, i guess i'll give you a sneak peek at that while we're on here why not um so the next video to come out is about selective breeding my guppies and i cleared out two tanks and move two pairs that I uh, selected to breed out so they're in these homes and this tank had rainbow fish I moved them and this tank had or this tank had rainbows this one had cichlids moved them and then the other video is maintenance on this tank that tank was really becoming a jungle and I had to get it under control and really see what's going on same thing with these other uh, tanks on the ends but uh, fish rooms coming along and really there's going to be some big changes to the fish room uh, with doing more selective breeding but anyways guys that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you at aquashella if you're going to be there i hope you're going to be there and anyways thanks for watching i think i said that already a few times anyways thanks for watching one last time and i'll see you